Hi, my name is Julie Waters and I'm the HR and Compliance Director of Thomas Carroll Group in Caerphilly. We've also got offices in Newport, Swansea, Haverford West, Hereford and London and we employ over 150 people. I'll tell you more about the company and what we do later on. But for now, I want to tell you how I came to work in financial services. So when I was 13, I can remember trying to choose my GCSE option subjects with my parents asking me, so what is it you want to do with your life then, Jules? And I said something like, well, I want to earn lots of money, drive a nice car, be able to go on holidays and be able to spend lots of money on clothes and makeup. So with the guidance of my parents, I chose GCSE subjects, which I enjoyed and also that I was good at so that I could try and get the highest possible marks. I had a conversation with the school careers officer a couple of years later, and it was at that point that I decided not to further my education with A-levels or a degree, but left school with GCSEs with grades ranging from A to D. The truth was, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life, apart from having all the material things that I've mentioned, and to be happy, fulfilled, motivated, and interested in the work that I did. I toyed with being a private investigator because that seemed really glamorous from the TV programmes. Then I thought about being a travel rep so I could enjoy the sunshine and the social life. But I began to realise, probably with the guidance of my parents again, that I wasn't going to achieve the level of salary I wanted from these roles. So I applied for the first job that I saw advertised. And after a couple of interviews, I was offered the position of household and motor underwriter. And that was with Royal Insurance in Bristol. At the time, I didn't know what insurance was, and I certainly didn't know what a household and motor underwriter did. So for those of you who don't know, insurance is an arrangement by which a company provides a guarantee um, of compensation for a specified loss, damage, illness, or death in return for a payment, which is called a premium. I've been in financial services for over 30 years now, and I absolutely love my job. And if somebody asked me the question about what I wanted from life again today, I'd probably have the same answers that I did when I was 13. So what is financial services? Well, it's a sector that contributed 6.9%, which is 132 billion to the UK economy in 2018. And we employs over 1.1 million people, which is 3.1% of all of the jobs in the UK. Financial services firms can include banks, investment funds, insurance companies, insurance brokers, all of which have got to be regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. And that basically means that we've got to adhere to a certain level of competency and abide by a code of ethics and principles. Thomas Carroll, who I work for, is a multidiscipline company. We were established in 1972 and we provide advice, products and services to individuals and companies on risk management, health and safety, insurance, wealth management, financial advice, employee benefits and employment law, as well as providing 40 nationally recognised health and safety courses. Our clients literally range from Mrs Smith with her car insurance to the Wales Millennium Centre or the Royal Mint who manufacture the coins that we use in the UK. Our products include home and motor insurance, commercial insurance including cover for things like cyber attacks, music festivals and the property and assets owned by a company. Uh, we look at pensions, investments, life insurance, income protection insurance, health and safety consultancy and lots more. So in my time within financial services, I've had many roles, including being a broker, an account executive and an insurance underwriter. And I've spent time in many regions in the, over, the, um, over the UK, including the City of London, dealing with risk management for foreign national banks um, and Swiss investment companies, uh, looking at business for manufacturing plants for medical equipment for such things as knee replacement parts, motor traders who need to insure their property and vehicles, shipyards who want to restore and manufacture boats, and also in Lloyds of London. And that's where some of the world's highest risks um, in terms of amounts and the risks themselves are placed. So such things as aircraft, the risks and costs associated with having twins, and also body parts for models and footballers, all of which can be insured. Thomas Carroll generates an income of about 11 million and a profit of 1 million each year. We enter the Sunday Times Best Companies to Work For um, and we were voted within the top 30 in Wales for the last two years. This is a survey that all of our employees complete about the company, 
and that we're then benchmarked on a variety of topics. So that's things like well-being, de uh, development, management and giving back to the community. Our ultimate aim, um, aim is to be the best employer in the UK and the management team are all committed to working towards that. The sector evolves um, as buy-in habits and expectations change. So when I began my career, no one had heard of the internet. Uh, people still visited your office premises to buy products rather than purchasing online via apps or even the telephone. So we have to keep um, an eye on the future, which means that money is invested in research and development each year. And this is an area where interns and people on work experience can really help us with specific projects. Regulation is a key factor in our profession because we have to ensure that we're all complying all times. Otherwise, we face personal prosecution, fines, um, or the company could be forced to stop trading. The financial services sector is so diverse um, and there's such a large range of jobs. So in terms of insurance, financial advising and risk management, to name a few of the positions that are available, uh, we have insurance company actuaries who establish probabilities um, and assess risk. They analyse data and claims trends and they develop new financial products and the pricing of insurance premiums. Anybody with a mathematical brain would absolutely love this role. Insurance company underwriters who collect risk information, calculate premiums and decide what level of cover to provide. Insurance brokers who are the link between customers and insurance companies and they look at all of the products that are available in the market and then they work out which insurance policy is the best in terms of cover and price uh, for their customer and they provide prof professional advice um, and assist with claims too. We have claims executives who work with the customer to ensure that if they have an accident or loss, they're able to submit all of the necessary paperwork to ensure a claims payment is made. And they might also coordinate repairs, provide advice on technical wordings and negotiate settlements on behalf of the customer. We've got risk management um, and they plan and implement risk management processes. They assess risks and the degree of risk and then they look at ways to mitigate or transfer it. We've got risk surveyors who work mainly for insurers, surveying properties, preparing reports and advising on what ways to mitigate risks. We've got loss adjusters who work um, investigating claims on behalf of insurers. They inspect properties, gather evidence, interview claimants and witnesses, and then probably consult with the police and hospitals as well as advising on repairs or replacements um, post the loss. We've got financial advisors who review a customer's needs, they research financial products and they give uh, financial advice on such things as pensions, investments and savings. We've got power planners who model personal finance requirements and they research financial products and provide advice and recommendations. And then we have relationship teams, which includes account brokers, account managers and account executives who all work closely with customers to ensure that they're satisfied with the service being provided. And they provide the technical advice on the insurance products that are purchased. Insurance policies are a legal contract. And so lots of these roles are attractive to people who have got a law degree. And then, of course, we've got lots of roles and functions outside of those giving technical advice to clients, and we call these support functions. So, for example, we have marketing teams who work to promote products and services and to increase sales and inquiries for the company. We've got accountants who work to collect the premiums from customers. They arrange the payment of salaries and bills, and they look at the financial performance of the company and they forecast future earnings. Everyone uses IT these days, so we've got IT teams who work to keep the computer infrastructure safe, um, stable and suitable for use. We've got receptionists and switchboard operators who answer the telephone and divert the calls. And then we've got business developers who spend time networking at events to find new clients for the business. Of course, when you're employing people, you need a HR team, so they look after the well-being of employees, recruit for positions that are available, issue contracts of employment, put together training programmes, and they deal with all of the employment law issues too. Compliance teams who understand the regulatory rules, because as I said, we're regulated by the Financial Services Authority, and um, we ensure then that the company and our employees adhere to the, the regulatory requirements. 
And then we've got directors who look at the strategic aims of the business, leading the company and its people. And to be honest, that list could just go on and on. So these roles attract different salaries, of course, depending on the region of the country that you work in, the level of the role within the company, the experience, qualifications and what company you work for. But to give you an idea, um, salaries probably range from 20,000 to well in excess of 150,000. Some roles require a professional qualification to be able to trade, but others are just voluntary. But they all demonstrate to customers and the regulator that you're competent and you know what you're talking about. It can also attract a higher salary when you're qualified, so that's perhaps a bonus. As with chartered accountants, chartered surveyors and solicitors, there's professional qualification structure for our um, part of the financial services, uh, where upon completion of exams, you can gain your chartered qualification. Chartered status, though, is only achieved by companies and, and individuals who demonstrate a commitment to maintaining the highest standards of technical competence and ethical conduct, and it's the equivalent of achieving a degree. As a company, Thomas Carroll believed that our people are our greatest asset. Without them, we're nothing. So we invest in their development and futures, and we ensure that they're the very best that they are in whatever role they play. We've got a graduate program and an academy, which is used to identify individuals within the business that can give a commitment to learn quickly. And we accelerate their development um, and learning quite considerably. It also aims to keep employees engaged in the business because it provides us with a, a succession plan as well, because more often than not, most of our managers and directors are promoted from within the company. On average, our graduates achieve their chartered qualifications within five years of joining the business, whereas the industry norm is probably about nine years. We recognise that people um, who join our profession don't always have experience, which is why we recruit on attitude. Um, to be honest, my theory is that if somebody has the right positive at attitude, drive and determination to want to succeed, then I can teach them uh, the knowledge and the skills that they need. Things like dressing smartly, taking pride in yourself and your work, timekeeping, manners and having respect for others cost nothing, but they absolutely mean a lot. In an interview, it's important to be uh, prepared, research the company, the industry, the roles and the people, be on time, be yourself, relax and let your personality shine through because that's what they want to see. The final thing I'm going to leave with you is that at your age, if anybody had mentioned a career in financial services to me, I'd have probably thought that it was perhaps boring and limited in terms of the salary range. But that couldn't be further from the truth. And I hope that uh, this short webinar give, has been useful in giving you an ins insight into our sector. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. So please send them to your teacher to pass on. And finally, I just want to wish you all the very best with your remaining school years and with your chosen career. Thank you for listening.